Bridgehampton Double 500 in late September acts as a curtain raiser for the Big Fall International Series. Walt's not known as king of the bridge for nothing. He has won an unprecedented 10 out of 12 major races here. Here's Walt and Chris in the pits. Walt, you've been racing here at Bridgehampton since the course was built. Is it a deep knowledge of the course, a big advantage in a race like we're having today? Well, it's it's a some advantage, but of course, uh, these uh, this boy from uh, Italy, uh, Scarfiotti, came over and uh, very soon after he was here, did a, a very fine lap, and he certainly deserves a lot of credit uh, for coming to a course like this where he's never been before, and uh, uh, I look for a very good race. Well, you really outdragged Scarfiati in that white factory Ferrari. Well, the, uh, of course, the Scarab is more suited to this uh, uphill uh, deal where you need a lot of torque. We have so much more torque than the Ferrari. You got right out front from the beginning, and you seem to open up that lead continuously every time you went around. Well, it's important to uh, get a lead in a, in a race like this because it's quite long, and what you're endeavoring to do, of course, is to build up enough lead to uh, get away free with your uh, pit stop. This uh, two point eight mile circuit out on the end of Long Island over the sand dunes is one of my favorites and I understand it's one of yours. Yes it is. I enjoy this uh, this track very much. It's a, it's a demanding circuit. Uh, it's very fast and uh, it's really fun to drive. It's safe too, isn't it, to run on the sand dunes. They say that Zandvoort's that way in, in uh, the Netherlands too because you've got a little protection if you go off. Yes, it uh, helps to slow the car down considerably when you go off. Uh, Tell us about the uh, business of not lapping Pedro. You got out front of everyone else, and then you sort of laid behind Pedro a few seconds. Yes. Um, the I found that, uh, we found in practice, rather, that the car was using quite a, much, quite a bit much more fuel than we thought it should. And uh, so we were staying behind Pedro to conserve some of this and maybe getting a little toe up the straight uh, until half distance, and of course, we could get half the dis distance and we could go on to uh, after the pit stop. What's coming up very soon, I think, is one of the most exciting and talked about incidents in the last season of American racing. Here you come for that famous three minute and 45 second pit stop. Yes, well, we had been using quite a bit of oil and uh, we were running, losing some pressure on the uh, right hand corners. So I knew we were going to have to put quite a bit of oil in and uh, uh, proved to be quite a problem. What was it mechanically? Uh, they're just dropping it in drip by drip there. Yes, the uh, the uh, baffle that... There uh, goes Pedro. Uh, Excuse me, Walter, but he's yes. you've unlapped yourself. Well, this will mean that uh, from now on, uh, at the point at which I pull out of the pits, he will be that much further ahead of me. Back to this oil situation, we had a problem here whereby we uh, had to put oil in through the breather and the breather was baffled so that it wouldn't spit oil out when at high revs and uh, it did cause quite a bit of problem. Walter you uh, almost lost your poise here you're usually so good-natured and pleasant. <laughs> well it's kind of hard to uh, build up a lead and uh, then lose it all and one <laughs> Pit stop. Well, I don't think there's anything more exciting in racing than the chase, and here starts one of the best in the history of American sports car racing. I understand that you were right uh, there. Excuse me. Sure. Now, uh, right there, where I went off the road to race in the dust, uh, the car, of course, was quite heavy with the uh, fuel that we had just put on. Right. And uh, of course, uh, it's a little bit more uh, take a little bit more handling, and uh, I didn't. Uh, compensate for this. Well, you were just going like gangbusters. I, they had you through the traps at 180. How fast do you think you went? Well, I think that's optimistic, Al, but I think that probably we're doing a little over 170. Well, I don't think that on Bridgehampton, 170 standing still. Here you are, uh, five minutes behind Pedro. Uh, five seconds. Five seconds, excuse yes. me. Uh, you unlapped yourself very soon here now, didn't you? Yes, uh, we had to um, uh, get by him as quickly uh, and with as little effort as possible because uh, I knew I was going to have this problem again with the oil because we really couldn't put enough right. oil in at the... Uh, uh, there you had stop. a six-second lead, and I understand in this chase that you broke the rack rec 
lap record repeatedly. I don't think there was a better race for you all year. No, it was, um, it was a very good race. And, uh, uh, here you come, another victory for the Xerex Special. Here we are in victory lane again. There's Walter with John Meekham Jr., the owner of the team. Walter certainly not known as the king of the bridge for nothing. Congratulations, Joe. A great drive, Walt. Thank you. It's a great car. And a, we have a great crew. Gee, they work like the devil. After I so stupidly took it off the course on Saturday. But uh, they're, they're a terrific crew, and they work very hard, and I'm real proud to be with them. Well, why three minutes and 45 seconds in the pits? Well, um, the place where we put the oil in, it's got a lot of baffles, and the oil uh, doesn't run in very fast. Of course, it's heavy oil, and we had a lot, hard time getting it in. Uh, that'll be fixed, though. John, it's a great automobile, as Walt says. What are your future plans for Walt and this car? Well, this car will be taken back and, and set up for the fall races in California, and it'll be used as a backup car. We have some new machinery that Walt will be driving then. But it's an old, reliable car, very reliable car. Congratulations to you both, and continued good luck. Thank you, Thank sir. You.